Hello and welcome to Dink Life. Today, let's talk about the history of a small pond that was once the entertainment hub in Akron, but has become a fenced off, dried up, and largely forgotten place. The Legend of Blue Pond. Located at the bottom of Goodyear Boulevard opposite Sieberling Field, Blue Pond was a source of recreation and scenic beauty for the Akron neighborhood. Created by a glacier long ago, this pond was once thought to be fed by a natural spring. However, this belief was debunked in 1909 when Goodyear attempted to pump 42 million gallons of water from it over two weeks for their factory boilers, only to observe the water level dropping. It turns out Blue Pond receives most of its water from surface runoff from Goodyear Heights, contributing to its pollution over the years. 200 years ago, Blue Pond was two to three times its current size, extending to the base of East Akron Cemetery, then known as Middlebury Cemetery, established in 1853. Historical photos show the Middlebury Cemetery mausoleum at the upper right, indicating the pond's location and how it once formed a circular pond. In the late 1800s, drains were installed to reduce the pond's depth by four feet, drying up the swampy area at the base of Goodyear Boulevard to accommodate a stable roadbed, a baseball field, and a track. These drains redirected water overflow into the nearby Little Cuyahoga River. Blue Pond Park opened on a rainy day, September 6, 1892, and was one of Ohio's finest parks, known for its excellent fishing. That same year, Frank Sieberling proposed a trolley line to Blue Pond, making it more accessible. In the late 19th century, the pond featured a boardwalk, a bandstand over the water, beer hall, and a small dance pavilion, attracting crowds for amusement and recreation. However, by 1898, increased rowdiness and theft led to the area's decline. Goodyear opened its first factory nearby in 1898, bringing many workers to the area. By the early 1900s, Frank Cyberling had built Cyberling Field, Akron's main ball field at the time. Sports were a major activity for the rubber companies, and this was an athletic hub of the city. In the 1920s, Frank Cyberling commissioned Warren Manning, an influential American landscape designer, to develop a landscaping plan for the area. Manning's designs included tennis courts, an adjacent track, and baseball fields. However, economic downturns and Cyberling's departure from Goodyear in 1921 prevented the full realization of these plans. By the 1930s, Goodyear's Plant One housed 20,000 workers just a few blocks from Blue Pond and Cyberling Field. The area featured amenities like a bank, Goodyear Theater, bowling alley, and corner bars to entertain employees. Up until the 1960s, Blue Pond was used for ice skating and hockey tournaments during winter. Blue Pond has many hidden mysteries. Over the years, it has caught fire twice. The pond is rumored to be surrounded by quicksand, which has trapped many guests. Once, over 800 fish were found dead along its shores, believed to be the result of a stick of dynamite detonated in the pond. Even a rusty hand grenade was thrown into its waters. A champion swimmer once performed a show at the pond, setting off fireworks that severely injured a spectator's groin and ended by blowing up his boat with dynamite. Why don't shows end with dynamite explosions anymore? In 1904, a gypsy wedding was held at the Blue Pond Pavilion. The pond's icy playground in winter claimed the lives of four children, either from falling through the thin ice or attempting to dispose of a dead baby through the melting ice. Some have claimed that the pond has no bottom, though railroad surveys reveal depths of up to 90 feet. This seems unlikely, given that it has been filled with runoff water for the past 150 years. Rumors persist, such as the tale of a train car plunging into the pond and disappearing forever. There is no confirmed proof of this. It may have came from widely circulated images captured during the Great Flood of 1913, Ohio's largest natural disaster at the time, which overwhelmed the city and caused the Little Cuyahoga to breach its banks in East Akron. Roughly a mile north of Blue Pond, railway tracks were eroded, leading to some train cars tumbling into the riverbed. This incident might have been confused with Blue Pond. Nearby Reservoir Park eventually took over as the main recreational venue for Goodyear Heights. Reservoir Park gets its name from the construction of a large city reservoir for the time, a project initiated in 1913. Before this, 
Akron relied on Summit Lake for its drinking water, despite concerns about its quality. This immense reservoir, housing 20 million gallons in its underground chamber, and continues to supply water today. Initially, the park's surroundings were largely barren until the 1930s, when recreational facilities and a pool were added. The final chapter for Blue Pond came in 1964, when a young boy drowned. A local newspaper article from March 25, 1964, described the pond's water as thick, slimy muck with rats and mosquitoes, exacerbated by runoff. Without environmental regulations at the time, contaminants from lead paint, leaded gas, and factory soot polluted the pond from Goodyear Heights runoff. In response, the mayor requested Goodyear to fence off the pond, costing $12,000 for the 3,000 feet of fencing. Since then, Blue Pond has slowly filled in, becoming a forgotten memory of Akron's once vibrant entertainment hub. A fun fact to finish, there was once a Blue Pond Inn where Ganley Toyota now stands. And if you ever find yourself in Akron, don't miss this forgotten piece of history. And as always, remember to get out there and explore.